there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are gonna take a look at the Smart Art Box. This is actually the October one, because the November one just came and I haven't even gone gone uh, through the, the October one yet. I've looked at it and I've been pondering, but that's as far as I've got. So let's take a look at what the, uh, the October box is. And um, the theme is, is Jackson Pollock, um, who is the famous kind of splatter painter, like you see here on the front, the uh, Jackson Pollock um, number five, back from 1948. And um, I have never really been a big fan of Jackson Pollock's work. Um, so I've been just kind of thinking about what I'm gonna do with this kit. Um, but of course it comes with a pamphlet that tells you all about the products, about the artist and the movement that you're gonna be learning about, which is great for homeschool artists or um, people just looking to try something different and it comes also with an idea for a project on the back so let's take a look at what came in this box um, so the first thing is the media which is paint and it is this uh, Sennelier abstract paint which is I've, I've seen these I've been curious about them I've never used them before but it's an abstract uh, it's a I'm sorry an acrylic paint that is in these little baggies and the baggies I guess uh, you open them like that oh they've got a little collar on there I'm just gonna squeeze a little bit see if the paint comes. Uh, yes, the paint's right there. I just don't want to squeeze it too much and have a big mess. But um, but the they have ends like that. And I was wondering why do they come like that? Well, there's these little tips that you put on the ends. They're kind of like um, like frosting tips, I guess. And uh, so it's kind of cool. You can put those on there and doodle with them, I guess. And the colors you sent me were kind of this. Um, this looks like this is purple. I thought it looked like ultramarine, but I guess it's purple. We got vermilion, which is kind of an orange base red, and we have white. So I have absolutely no idea what I'm gonna do with these colors. And I'll uh, get a couple um, small brushes here, which um, which the, the challenge is going to be, and I think this is where I'm hung up on it. It's kind of like, I would love to grab some supplies I already have, like, um, and if you're getting this kit at home, I think you absolutely should do that. Uh, but I try to keep it just the stuff that's in the box, so, so that if you're starting off new, this is your first box, and you just have these supplies, you can, you know, recreate whatever I'm going to create. But we've got this um, 8x10 stretch canvas, and uh, and then we've got that stuff to create with. So I don't know what I'm going to do. So I guess what I'm going to do is just um, just play and, uh, and see what happens. So um, without further ado, let's get to it. I'm going to start just by getting out all my supplies. So I unwrapped my canvas and took the caps off of my paints and I uh, just kind of dumped out the little um, toppers there to see what I had to work with. And I decided I would just kind of see uh, what these ends were all about. I've never used anything like this before. So uh, the best way to learn about a new supply is to really just get in there and play with it. I really liked how I could lay down thin ribbons of paint or, um, you know, streaky lines of paint. I was surprised actually at the detail I could get with these um, little paint tips. I kind of think these would be fun, like especially if you had um, a black bag of this paint and the finer tips, I think it would be fun to kind of accent a finished larger painting uh, like that. So I think there's a lot of potential for these. And uh, when I was done using this, I did clean out the paint tips and save them so that I could experiment with them more later. Um, so what I did was after just kind of seeing how they worked, I didn't really want a bunch of stripes on my canvas. So I just took the cardboard from the uh, paint tip packaging and used that as a, a spreader to kind of scrape and spread around that paint. You could also use like an old gift card. Um, I just thought it was kind of fun just to see what I could do with these colors. Mainly though, I wanted kind of a mid range toned background just to give me another color to work with because red, purple, and white, I just was not feeling that color combination and I needed something to kind of I needed to maximize those colors as much as I could. So um, I basically just started um, playing and I got the idea that I'd like to have like a uh, maybe a coffee themed painting. I thought this might be kind of fun for my kitchen. So I just used the white paint to sketch on a coffee cup and a little saucer. That was the tiniest tip I used first and it when I gave it more pressure, I got like little squiggly ribbons of color. And so then I switched to a bigger one um, because I didn't want those little ribbons. So now I'm using the little paintbrush to kind of fill in and spread around the paint. I am much more comfortable with a paintbrush than with these uh, paint tips, but um, but I found them both really fun to use. So it's kind of like uh, adding the paint with the tips, redistributing it with the brush as needed and um, 
almost sculpting. This technique feels a lot like sculpture because the paint, I'm using the paint so thickly and um, I'm using kind of the texture of the canvas to be almost like a color because I am so limited in colors and I'm using kind of every trick in the book to, uh, to kind of build a little interest on this painting. I'm using purple for my darkest shadow and again spreading it around with my, uh, with my brush. I don't think I ended up using the really small pointed round but I did use a little flat brush. These are Raphael brushes. I like the quality of those and I think I'm actually going to be using them more with um, like watercolor crayons or um, or stuff like that. I mean I did keep them with my acrylic brushes but uh, I, I don't paint with acrylics that often so I We'll probably end up trying them with my Caran d'Ache watercolor crayons. And I'm playing with a little bit of the red there. Um, I like the sketching. I have to say that I really like the loose sketching I could do with those um, those paint bags. It's kind of fun. So I wanted to have the, like a cafe sign in the corner, but it just wasn't working with that script that I was trying. So I thought, well, let me flatten this out a little bit, make a different uh, texture from what I have in the background, and then um, try a different paint tip for this. So to make the border of my sign, I went with that triple line tip. I really like that. That's a lot of fun to work with. And then I started off with a double line tip in the red and I'm just kind of doing block letters for the word cafe and um, the, the kind of the cool thing about these tips is that in addition to like applying paint you can actually scrape into the thick paint you have underneath with it and you can make some interesting textures that way and kind of scrape back to the white of your canvas or whatever color you originally painted. I like this big round tip because it feels a lot like cake decorating. Um, when my children were little, I did a lot of like specialty cakes for them for their birthdays, and I used to really enjoy that. Um, I don't, I don't enjoy it so much anymore. I guess I maybe don't have the patience for it, but this kind of reminded me of how much I used to enjoy um, doing that. So for cleaning these tips between colors, I recommend that you clean them out with a Q-tip um, because if you just try to flush it out with the next color of paint, you end up wasting quite a bit. I thought I would just be able to do that, but so much will just stay in the uh, the tips that you know you do waste some some paint um, but all in all it's a fun project you know I really had a lot of fun doing this I know it's nothing to write home about but this was just this was really fun now I have to say that uh, I do kind of felt like I wasted a massive amount of paint experimenting but that's kind of what the kits for to experiment to try different things now this is going to dry really um dimensional i don't know if you can really see maybe if i tip it up and hold it like you can kind of see look at all the thick impasto um passages there these tips are really neat um i can see myself definitely using this uh using them like to get some interesting um kind of texture and line work on things. I'd probably be more often to use it on like a, a poster or something for the kids' school. Uh, it's kind of like a novelty thing and I don't feel like I really control it that well, but um, this is also the first time I've tried this. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It reminds me of cake decorating. Um, to clean these, at first I thought, well, I'll just put this on the tip of the color that I want and I'll just squeeze it and flush out the paint, but that wastes a ton of paint to do it that way. So what I recommend you do when you want to change colors is to get the, the tip and also just when you're going to clean them and just kind of push like a q-tip uh in there and just push out that pigment because you don't want to rinse this stuff down your sink either push out the paint clean off as much as you can and then soak them in some water until you can clean them good and probably like an old toothbrush would work good for cleaning these because you want to make sure you keep the threads clean so um so they can screw back onto the bottles and work um it'd be really interesting to see if these fit other bottles other than the um the uh, Sennelier ones, but uh, but this was a really fun product. Um, I'm not a huge acrylic paint user, but this paint felt nice and thick, and um, it did seem it did hold its like it the peaks and the shapes and stuff. They've stayed raised; they haven't flattened out. Um, which I mean, I just finished it, so I mean, it's still like completely wet. Uh, but I thought that was really interesting, and um, for a project that I really wasn't excited about, it turns out it was really fun. So if you have any questions about this project or any of the products that are in this box, you can let me know in the comments below. And if you'd like to get a box of mystery art supplies delivered to your door every month, check out smartartbox.com. They have monthly subscription plans, or you can order past boxes if you don't like to be surprised. I'll keep links in the video description so you can check that out as well. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Till next time, happy crafting.